Let us go through some of the important date manipulation functions. First, we will see getting current date and timestamp. Then, we will actually see how to perform data arithmetic using functions such as date underscore add. We will also see how to get beginning date or time using trunk or date underscore trunk. We will also see how to extract information using date underscore format as well as calendar functions. There are a set of functions which are called as calendar functions. We will be spending some time on those as well. Then, we will also see how to deal with Unix timestamp using from underscore Unix time or to underscore Unix underscore timestamp. Now, let's start with current date and timestamp. Current date is the function or operator which will return today's date. Current timestamp is the function or operator which will return current time up to milliseconds. These are not like other functions and do not use circular brackets at the end. However, even if you specify circular brackets, it will work without any issues. Also, these are not listed as part of show functions for some reason. However, we can get help using describe. There is a format associated with date and timestamp. The format of the date is this one, yoy-mm-dd, which means the four digit uh, year, then two digit month, then two digit uh, date with hyphens in between. When it comes to timestamp, this is the format. Keep in mind that don't change the case of y's or d's. It might show incorrect results. Also, keep in mind that a date or timestamp in Spark SQL are nothing but special strings containing values using above specified formats. We can apply all string manipulation functions on date or timestamp because implicitly they are strings th themselves. That being said, here is the current date output. You will just uh, see today's date which is nothing but uh, November 3rd. You can uh, specify the circular brackets like this, it will work. But it is not mandatory to specify circular brackets. You can get current time by saying current timestamp like this. As the output is truncated, to ensure the format, we can run this uh, using a Scala approach and you can actually see the complete format of the timestamp. You can see that it is nothing but yoy-mm-dd space hh colon small m m colon small ss colon capital S S S. Actually, it is dot not column before millis. And you can actually review the format here. So, this is the timestamp format. That being said, now let's understand how to perform date arithmetic using functions such as date add, date underscore sub, date diff, which can be used to get difference between two dates, and also add underscore months, which can be used to add months to a date. Now, let's run this. I have added 32 days here, and you can see that it is written 2020 uh, December 5th. Uh, today is uh, November 3rd, and uh, 32nd day from today is 2020 December 5th. You can also run this to see how it works when you pass date like this along with the number of days. So, I have specified 2018 April 15th with 7.30 and you got 2020 April 14th as the output. Similarly, you can subtract. You can also subtract days between uh, current date and uh, 30 and you can see the output here. So, 2020 10 is the actual date which is 30 days behind. You can also get difference between two dates using this approach. It will subtract the date which is passed as second argument from the date which is passed as first argument and give the result. So, if you swap here, you will see the negative value. So, let me actually say this. So, now I have passed the smaller date as first argument and the larger date as the second argument and we can see the negative value here. This is how you can add months to a date. You can see that it have given 2021 February 3rd as date. As today's date is 2020 November 3rd, it have given 2021 February 3rd. Now, on the border conditions, if I take 2019 January 31st and try to add one to it, it will not give by adding 30 days or 31 days to it. It will just return the last day of the next month. Now, you can see that it is returning 2019 February 28th, not some date in the March. You can also validate against May 31st and you are getting June 30th as the output. You can also use add months on top of current timestamp. and You can see that it is returning the date part only. It is excluding the timestamp part and only returning the date part. So, keep this also in mind when you try to use functions such as add months and date add on top of current timestamp, the timestamp part is uh, remote. Now, let's understand how to get beginning date or time using trunk and date underscore trunk. We can use mm to get beginning date of the month, yy can be used to get beginning date of the year. We can apply trunk either on date or timestamp, however, we cannot apply it other than month or year. You can see the output here. 
So this is the description with respect to trunk. The syntax is first you have to pass the value and then format. So in this case, I am specifying MMA as format and hence it is giving the beginning date of this month, which is nothing but 2020 November 1st. Similarly, if I pass 2019 January 23rd, it will return 2019 January 1st. If I pass current date and YY, it will give me 2020 January 1st as the date. If you try to apply these things on the timestamp with uh, the timestamp related uh, format strings such as HH for hours, it will not work. You can see it is written null. While trunk can be used to get beginning time of a given month or year, we can get the beginning time up to second using date underscore trunk. So date underscore trunk is uh, more widely used compared to trunk and you can get the description of the date underscore trunk here. Now when it comes to the syntax, first it will take the format as an argument, then the timestamp, which is uh, other way around with respect to the trunk. So you have to pass the format like this first and then you have to give the timestamp uh, expression such as current timestamp in this case and you can see the output here. So it have returned the beginning uh, time of the current hour which is nothing but 2020 November 3rd 7 or 7 pm. Now let's understand how to extract information using date underscore format. Let's uh, see the syntax here. This is very widely used uh, date uh, extraction function or uh, information extraction function from the date. You can see the syntax here. You just have to specify the timestamp and the format. You can also specify the date in place of timestamp. Let's get the current timestamp first and now let's say I want to get the year from it. I can use this uh, date format function. I can pass the timestamp uh, as first argument and then specify the four digit year like this. So the format for four digit year is yyyy. If I just use yy it will only print two digit year. Now to get the month you can use mm and you can see the month here. To get the day of month, you can say DD. Today is number 3rd and hence it is showing 3rd here. However, if you use capital D, capital D, it will actually give us the day within the year, not within the month. So let's see which day is today's date within the year. It is 308th date. So if you run this against December 31st, if it is not a leap year, you will get 365. Now let us run this, which will return a 3 character month. You can see here, if you specify 4Ms like this, it will actually display full month name, which is nothing but November. Same is the case with uh, day. If you want to get three character day name, you can use capital E, capital e as the format. You can specify four capital E's like this to get full day name, which is nothing but Tuesday. Here is how we can get time related information such as hour, minute, seconds, milliseconds, etc. from timestamp using date format itself. To get the hours, I can say capital H, capital H to get in 24 hour format. If I say small h, small h like this, we will get 12 hour format. Now with respect to the minutes, small m, small m is the format. With respect to the seconds, it is small s, small s. With respect to milliseconds, it is capital S, capital S and you should be able to see the milliseconds here. This is how you can extract not only the year part or month part or date part, you can also get the names of the months and dates and also you can actually get the hour part or minute part or seconds part or milliseconds part. There is a way even to get the time zone information, however I am not getting into those details. That being said, at times we might want to convert a date into a string of specific format. For that we can use this approach where we can specify the expression which is timestamp expression in this case with the format like this. So in this case I am trying to get the timestamp with uh, 4 digit year and 2 digit month. Uh, together I want to extract it as a integer. This is how we can take care of it. If you want to get year, month and date using this format, you can uh, specify like this and it will get a 6 digit uh, date where first 4 characters will be or first 4 digits will be year. It is actually 8 digit date and the first 4 digits will be year, next 2 digits will be month and next 2 digits will be date. You can also specify a different uh, separator between year, month and date like this. So in, in case of uh, printing the date if you don't want to use hyphen but if you want to use forward slash you can specify the format like this and you can see that output content forward slash as a delimiter between year, month and dates. You can also use calendar functions to get a day, day of month, month, week of year, year etc. You can see examples after going through the help here. 
they just take either date or timestamp and they return whatever you are looking for. So in this case, select year of current date as year will return four digit year. Month of current date will return one or two digit month. Week year of current date will return week of year, not week year. Week of year on current date will return uh, which week is this within the year. This week is 45th week. Day of current date will return uh, the date within the month, which is nothing but third. You can also use day of month for that. So this is how you can use these specific functions to extract whatever information you are looking for. Finally, as part of date manipulation functions, let's talk about how to deal with Unix timestamp. Unix timestamp is nothing but a integer value which started on 1970, June 1st or something, and it is incremented by one every second, and it typically is an integer. So using that Unix time, if you want to convert it into regular date or time, then we use from Unix time. If you want to convert regular data time into Unix time, then we use either Unix timestamp or to Unix timestamp. So these are the functions which we typically use. You can actually get the Unix epoch in Unix or Linux terminal using this. I can also run it here by saying percentage percentage sh. I'm not sure whether sh is working here. It is not working because this is a Scala kernel and hence the magic command is not available. I have to use the Scala based approach, which is nothing but this one import sys dot process dot underscore. Then I can say colon, sorry, not colon, double quote, date, double quote. And then I should be using exclamation mark. This also might not work because we have quotes in this. Yeah, it is not working. So the only way to get this working is uh, by actually connecting to Unix terminal and run this. When we say Unix terminal, it can be Linux terminal or it can be Mac terminal also because Mac is also a Linux flavor. So in this case, if you are using Jupyter Hub environment and if you want to connect to the terminal, you can go to new, go to the terminal here. It will launch the terminal or you can also use PuTTY or uh, Mac terminal to connect to it. Now if you paste this and hit enter, it is written an integer. Now I want to convert it into regular timestamp. We can use from underscore Unix time like this to convert it into a regular timestamp. Now you can see the details. So this uh, number is related to 2019 April 30th, 6, 18, 51 PM. Also you can uh, take this date and uh, convert it into Unix timestamp using two underscore Unix underscore timestamp. You can see the information here. So it is uh, written this value. This and this are same. Now you can also specify the format in which you want to convert the data to. So directly you can say from underscore Unix time and it will only give the year and month part when we specify the format like this. So there is no need to convert it into regular uh, date or timestamp using from Unix time and then apply date format on top of it if you want to get a specific part of the date or timestamp. You can directly use from underscore Unix time. All the formats that are specified in date format will work without any issues. Now if I run this, it will give me six digit uh, year and month like this. If you want to print the date in this format with four digit year, then hyphen, then two digit month, then hyphen, then two digit date, then you can specify the format like this, the same way as we have seen with respect to date underscore format, and it will give us the date in the format we are looking for. You can also extract the timestamp in the format you are looking for by specifying the format up to whatever uh, detail you want to see with respect to the time. In this case, if you just want to get hour and month, sorry, not month, hour and minute, you can specify like this. If you want to get 12 hour format rather than 24 hour format, you can actually say HH like this. Also, you can specify the time zone. And there is a way to specify the time zone also. You can explore it. Do not remember on top of my head. Now using 12 hour format, it is displaying 618 here. Now you can also convert a specific date of specific format into Unix time using this approach. You just have to specify how to interpret this string. So in this case, we are saying for this timestamp, interpret like this, and it will return the, uh, the Unix timestamp only for the date part by skipping the timestamp part. Now let's run this, and you will get the Unix timestamp for the date part of this timestamp. If you want to consider everything, you just have to specify the format for the rest of the details with respect to time, such as hours, minutes, and seconds. As long as the format is correct, it will actually return the value we are looking for. 
this is how you should be able to deal with uh, unix timestamp by converting it into regular timestamp and vice versa and make sure that you are uh, very clear with respect to the format if you specify the typos you will see incorrect or inconsistent results and hence be careful and understand how a four digit year is supposed to be represented month should be represented date should be represented etc some of the common mistakes are for months people tend to use small m small m it will return minutes in place of months similarly for day people tend to use capital d capital d it will give us the day within the year rather than day within the month these are the some common mistakes which people do so keep in mind the actual format for each and every attribute of the date so that you don't make those silly mistakes